So what is up, guys? It's Joe here. It is BudgetBoss.ca. It is Wednesday, April 8th. April 8th, so that's day 13 of the COVID campaign for financial awareness. And this is my campaign over 30 days, starting March 23rd, going all the way to May 1st, the end of the month, uh, where I'm going to be talking about financial fitness, financial awareness to get people to understand what is important while we're in this lockdown mode in terms of your finance. Uh, so yesterday I went on a bit of a rant. I was talking about, um, basically I was talking about stop complaining in your money situation and how not to be broke, uh, how to make sure you get out of that zone and it's basically all on you. Uh, today I'm in a bit of a non-rant kind of mood, so I'm actually going to get on the optimistic side of things instead of ranting about a negative thing, which was, well, it's not a negative thing in my opinion. It's actually a positive thing, but it can be seen as negative because I was speaking with a negative tone in terms of uh, not actually uh, looking as the glass half full or babying people, which is something that I am quite known for as being blunt. Uh, so today I wanted to talk about money mentality and money mentality is everything everything and the reason why i wanted to talk about money mentality is because uh today is actually my dad's birthday so my dad turns 61 today and he is my money hero he is a guy who never uh worked um a job making a great amount of money in his whole life he made a decent amount of money but he was smart with his money moves and actually was able to retire early uh which is good he retired this year uh, this year, or no, it was the end of last year. So it was the end of 2019 he retired. And uh, January 1st, he started off this year as a retired man. Uh, 61, uh, 60 years old, just turned 61 today. And uh, he built himself up a nice little life just by working hard, making smart money moves. At times when I was a kid, it didn't feel like a good thing. It felt like we were going without. Uh, but we were actually only going out without the things that we didn't really need. We had everything we needed uh, and, uh, you know, even some of the wants that we wanted. But we didn't have everything we wanted, and that's a good thing. And I look back on it knowing that that was a good thing. Uh, it didn't feel like it at the time. You know, we didn't go on vacations. We didn't go out to dinners. Uh, we didn't have nice cars or even new cars. We always had sort of chunky cars uh but now looking at it he can actually get any car he wants and uh do anything he wants and uh including retiring early which is what he really wanted and uh which is what he actually was trying to prepare for in case he needed to do and uh by some sort of stroke of magic the place that he worked uh closed up shop uh, right when he was about to retire. So for him, it was perfect timing, but he got himself in that position where he could retire when he wanted to, uh, which happened to coincide when his place uh, moved. And for him, um, it was a perfect circumstance uh, and it was time for him and he was ready for it. The people that weren't ready for it, it hurt a lot for him. It actually uh, was just an amazing thing, and it worked out perfectly. So it's my dad's birthday today, and that's the reason I'm going to be talking about uh, money optimism and money mentality and getting your money mentality in the right spot so you can actually make smart money moves and get yourself in a position where you want to be. And that's actually the whole goal with money. Money's just the tool, but if you have the right mentality and you make the right moves, it's a tool that can actually make your life a lot better. But first things first, let's jump into a market update like we always do every day. Today, the markets are positive. Now, if you noticed, yesterday I mentioned how the markets were positive as well, but they finished on an even note. So they gave back all those gains that they made yesterday. Today, they are up again, but uh, we are hoping that they don't give back all those gains. So uh, this is all based on the optimism that, again, that the curve of the coronavirus is dipping and we're actually getting to a point where the coronavirus itself has hit its peak, uh, peak lives lost, hopefully. Hopefully no more lives get lost, but we know that that's not going to be the case. The people are losing their life every minute, every day. Uh, and hopefully cases go down because if cases goes go down, uh, that means that lives lost will obviously go down as well. So we're doing the right thing. The quarantine is working. The self-isolation is working. The social distancing and physical distancing, it's all working and it's being proven to work right now. Uh, even in New York State, the epicenter of the pandemic, uh, they are saying that they're not needing new hospital beds, which is a great thing. Um, so I want that curve to continue. 
I want that trend to go down. Here in Ontario, Canada, we have not fully hit our peak yet, uh, but it appears that it could be on the horizon within uh, this week or early next. So the hope is that we hit that peak and we are ready for it and we steamroll through it and everyone just continues what they're doing. Again, we're going to be locked up for the whole month of April, uh, but I think during that course of the month of April, we're going to see uh the real the real timeline of this virus and what will happen and i think that's why the markets are actually acting the way they're acting on a hint of optimism that things will actually straighten themselves out sooner rather than later uh the lives lost or projected lives lost are going to be less apparently less uh in certain places in america uh, than they thought they would be, which is a good thing. Hopefully, knock on wood, that happens, and it's less people lose their lives. And uh, my hope is that around the world, that's the same case as well. So we need to stay vigilant. We need to keep doing this because ultimately, this will be uh, this. Our actions today will determine our sex, our success, success, our success, success. That was sorry, a hard word for me to say right there. Success two weeks from now. It's going to determine all that for us. So if we actually continue on with this, the markets will continue to rise as things become open again and we actually get to live our lives like the way we want to. So again, I also want people to sign up for the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. I'm putting all those links in the bio. CRA account, Canada Emergency Response Benefit. Get signed up. Get the benefits you need and deserve. Uh, make sure that you're weathering this financial storm that we're all going through right now. Okay, and also, again, sign up for the Combo Expenses Worksheet. Hundreds and hundreds of people have signed up for this. I know because I have uh, sent them all personally their um, Expenses Worksheet. It's a great tool that you can use to actually make uh, your money organized during this downtime and figure out exactly where all your money's going. Yes, it may shock you at first, but it will feel good at the end when you know what you can do to make your situation better. So... I wrote a post back in October of 2018, so over two years ago now, or no, just about two years ago now, how to regain or gain your money optimism. And the big thing about money, and it's uh, Dave Ramsey, I, in the post I shared yesterday from him, he said money is about 80% uh, mentality and 20% uh, head knowledge. So all of it is the mentality and the actions you take and the state that you're in, uh, Twenty only 20% 20 is head knowledge. So making the right moves uh, or actually like doing something creative that's going to get you to where you want to be. The big thing about money mentality is that you don't need to be an expert to actually be good with money. You just need to limit mistakes. And that's something I'm going to show you uh, by the end of this post today and help you understand. But the biggest thing about money is to actually limit the mistakes and optimize the small things you are doing right with your money. So how to regain or gain your money optimism. So if you don't have any money optimism, it's a bad place to be. I've been there before. Uh, if you do have money optimism or you did have it and you've lost it, I give you tips on how to regain it. So the first thing you have to do is save some money. If you have a little bit of money, and I spoke about this yesterday, having even just $500 like made me feel like king of the world. Uh, now I'm in a position where I do have my fully stocked emergency fund. But for me, um, it took a while to get there. And when I got there now, even with this coronavirus pandemic, yes, my business has slowed down. So I have to find new ways to drum up business and meet new people. Um, and that to me is difficult. But at the same time, I have time to do that. I also can weather the financial storm because I have my emergency fund and I'm ready for it. I don't qualify for any of the benefits the government of Canada is bringing in. Um, but that's okay, and they're there for the people that need them. But I do have the emergency fund. So saving anything, saving even a little bit of money. And if you have, and this is why with Dave Ramsey, his first baby step is save $1,000 mini emergency fund. It's a huge, huge thing because it will actually give you the money. It will give you that optimism feeling like, oh, wow, I got a bit of savings. And I speak to people when they finally get a little bit of an emergency fund, uh, they feel great after that. And that's the one thing that I have no control over as their financial advisor to actually help them uh, do. I can show them how they should do it, but I don't have physical control over their accounts to make them save money. And for them, um, that is oftentimes the biggest accomplishment they have. Uh, I can help them with their investments. I can help them with their insurance or their mortgage. Uh, but for me, I can't make them save a small emergency fund. And they feel great when they finally get that done. So save some money. Save anything. Put anything away. Try your best. And uh, that will actually make you feel really, really good. 
Um, this is kind of counteractive to what I was just saying about money optimism. If you're in debt or if you don't have any savings, but do something for yourself. So um, call it a cheat meal, if you will. Uh, but yeah, a cheat meal after you've uh, been uh, dieting all week, exercising all week, your Friday night cheat meal. How about your Friday night splurge on yourself? Now, I'm not saying go out and buy an expensive dress or anything, things you cannot afford, but I'm sure you can afford a bottle of wine to enjoy by yourself or uh, some takeout that you enjoy or even having a nice coffee in the morning or a nice latte uh, that obviously is more expensive than your coffee at home. Do something for yourself to actually reward yourself for doing something good in terms of your money. It can't be all a grind with money, otherwise you're not going to want to do it. Um, knowing no people, no one I really know can endure that kind of punishment for that long in terms of restraining themselves and with their money. So do something for yourself. It's an important thing to reward yourself for doing the right things. Uh, do something for someone else. So uh, instill some knowledge that you've gained over uh, your money journey as you are uh, saving up some money. Or if you see someone that actually doesn't um, have their way, uh, you can show them to get what what you or where you are now if you've gained a little bit of that confidence back and built up a little bit of savings and paid off a little bit of debt. Uh, you can donate to a charity. That makes everyone feel good. Uh, donating to a charity is about the most unselfish, selfish thing you can do because we all do because it makes us feel good. Uh, and that's a good thing, right? What's wrong with feeling good? Uh, so do it because you feel good, but you're also helping someone and feeling good. So it's the most unselfish, selfish thing you can do. You're giving something to someone else, but you feel good about it. So you're rewarding yourself. Start your nest egg. Obviously, I was just talking about savings, so you could actually put money into an investment account. That'll make you feel good to see it grow over time. Uh, I mean, watching my investments grow is a great feeling. I really, really thoroughly enjoy that. So that's something that can help you gain some money optimism. Make a money plan. So speak with a financial advisor. Speak with someone like myself. Uh, develop a plan or develop some money goals that you have and try and knock out those goals. So uh, go over them and, and develop a plan to get to those goals. Develop a timeline. Uh, making a money plan just gives you a heightened sense of, sense of optimism. It gives you direction. It gives you a course. And it shows that you have a solid grasp on what you're trying to do with your money. Create the budget. Of course, I've given you the uh, monthly finances, uh, the financial worksheet that you can download and you can actually do your monthly budget on a regular basis. Creating a budget actually gives you clarity and that's the whole purpose behind it. It's about clarity. It's not about restraint. It's not about spending, uh, not spending any money. It could be about that, but the main reason is clarity. You are actually directing your money to where it should be and that's the whole reason about it. Um, also, boost your savings, not your lifestyle. So don't actually go out and have lifestyle creep where if you make more money, you are actually spending more money. That's not the way to go about things. Boost your savings. So if you have a lifestyle that you're comfortable in, don't let your money follow that lifestyle. Yes, upgrade your life slightly as your uh, money or your income grows or your savings grow, but don't drastically uh upgrade your lifestyle, boost your savings. And if you actually put more money into savings instead of your lifestyle, that will make you feel a lot better and give you a lot of money optimism. Uh, do a deep cleanse. I know I feel really great about uh, purging a bunch of crap that I have around the house. We all do that. We all collect and then it builds up. Uh, I know I'm in need of one right now. The good thing is we have time to do it. So do deep cleanse, get rid of a bunch of stuff and donate it. That will make you feel good as well. So you're helping out other people. Eliminate bad relationships, especially bad money relationships. We all have those friends uh, that actually have no regard for their own financial situation and they go out and they spend too much money and they want someone to do it with. Don't be the partner in crime uh, with someone in terms of bad money decisions. Uh, you are not being a good friend to them and you're not being good to yourself. And ultimately, toxic friendships and toxic money relationships are, are not good for you. They're going to make sure that you don't get to where you want to be. And it doesn't mean you're being a bad friend. It just means you care about yourself and you actually care about that other pers person too. So you're going to need to get rid of bad relationships in terms of money and even in general because you're not going to feel optimistic if you're around bad people all the time or people that just aren't good for you. It doesn't necessarily mean they're bad people. It just means they're not the right person for you. 
and live right. So you want to live right. This is a tough one, getting uh, optimal amounts of sleep, eating right, working out. Uh, that's a tough one, right? So waking up early, uh, you know, making sure that your place is nice and tidy. These are things that we do on a regular basis, hopefully. But if you do them on a regular basis and you get your life this way, you'll actually feel a lot better and you feel better about your money as well. If you feel right uh, mentally in terms of your lifestyle and the habits that you have, your money will follow. And that's a huge, huge thing. So I want people to check that out as well. Uh, I have uh, this post here that I'm going to share with you as well. Eliminating your money depression. So money depression is a huge one. And it is rampant. And a lot of people are going through money depression right now because they have less money or no money coming in. The big thing about it is that money depression happens all the time. And that money depression begets more money depression. And it shuns away money optimism. And that's the huge thing is that we often make the worst decisions about our money when we are money depressed. Uh, and when things aren't going right, we tend to make them worse. And that is something that we really need to avoid. Like right now, why I'm always stressing, do not make market moves that are not optimal for you. Pause for the cause because we are in a difficult situation right now. So do not make decisions you will regret later. So address the issue. Uh, addressing your issues in terms of your money issues is the first step to actually do that. So I go through my clients with a set of questions to ask them what they feel good about in terms of their money situation, what they feel bad about in terms of their money situation. It's a huge, huge thing that helps me understand where their mentality is at in terms of that. What I want them to do is the things that they feel bad about in terms of their money and then actually work their way through them and then feel good about them. But that only starts you address the issue. So the things that you're not so confident about, the things that you don't feel good about, you have to address the issue. Um, it's not fun and it is actually terrifying and it can be very emotionally draining. So you have to, but you have to actually get through that to make sure that you understand. Ask for help. That's a huge one. That's where actually I, uh, I had great success the second I started asking for help and understanding and looking for help and seeking out ideas on how to be better with my money. Uh, we are, we can't, we often just don't know what we need to do. And a second set of eyes who's not um, physically or emotionally vested in your situation will actually be very helpful. And that's actually why I have a job, because it's a second set of eyes that can help you out and get you outside of your own head, thinking about the things that you might not necessarily be thinking about. Uh, find a hobby, a cheap one. So yeah, pick up something that actually doesn't cost you a lot of money. Um, eliminate your money depression by taking, absorbing your time with something that doesn't cost a lot of money and is good for you. Uh, it could be anything. It could be uh, sports, uh, playing sports. It could be exercising. It could be joining a group or learning a language. Uh, these are things that actually make you a better person, but also help you gain some money, uh, money or money optimism as well. Uh, physically fit, obviously, when you're not physically fit or you don't feel well, you're not going to make good decisions because you're not mentally in the right state as well. So focusing on physical health is attuned to actually being emotionally helpful and financially helpful or financially healthy. I'm sorry, healthy, financially healthy, emotionally wealthy and uh, healthy and physically healthy. Those are all inter intertwined. So again, physically fits a huge one. Avoid substances. Now, I'm not one to tell people how to live their life. I enjoy a good cocktail here and there. But the thing is, is that we cannot drown our sorrows in substances. They'll still be there at the end. And in fact, often substances end up making our financial situation worse because they do cost a lot of money. Uh, alcohol costs a lot of money. Drugs, if that's what you're into, cost a lot of money. I don't do drugs. I don't condone or I condone them, I guess. I don't care if people do them, but I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's stupid. Uh... But if that's what you're going to do, that's what you're going to do. Just know that you're making decisions that are affecting your mental health, your physical health, and your financial health. So if you can avoid substances, and that can even include overeating and anything like that. So if you can avoid that, then that's a huge, huge upside to eliminate your money depression. Um, it was mentioned before, so helping others out, you're actually going to feel great. You're going to get some optimism back. You're going to do well. And uh, again, one thing you have, no matter how bad you have it in terms of your money situation, there's always someone who has it worse. Always someone who has it worse. So that's not something to make supposed to make you feel good. But at the same time, though, there are people who have it worse than you. So we should be somewhat thankful that we have the mentality and the idea to get out of our current state and we can move forward with that. 
Uh, stick to the plan. Create the plan. Stick to the plan. You stick to the plan, and it actually starts producing rewards for you. You're going to feel a lot better and uh, regain some of that money optimism. If you deviate from the plan, then you have no one to blame but yourself, but then you'll get down on yourself as well, and you'll be like, well, if I maybe did this, if I maybe did that, this would have happened. That's what you don't want to happen to you. Um, again, so eliminating your money depression is a huge thing. And I also have this post I'm going to share as well. Terrible pieces of financial advice. So terrible financial advice is all abound. Um, and this will actually, I'm not going to go through it completely, but this one will actually help you understand um, what you need to not do. And oftentimes, Chris on IG, oftentimes the mistakes that you make will get rid of that money optimism and actually uh, get rid of, make your money mentality uh, a bad place. Now, there's tons of money mistakes out there. Terrible financial advice is just as common or if not more common than good financial advice. So I want people to understand what the terrible financial advice is. Avoid that at all costs. Understand it. Question everything. And that's a huge thing uh, for people to understand. So I'm going to attach this post as well. Uh, so check it out. T 10 terrible pieces of financial advice. And this is from March of last year. So about a year ago. Uh, you can find me again, of course, at uh, Facebook. All my posts will be tagged there, including all the resources you need to apply for the government benefits that are available. Uh, Instagram, IG, if you're watching me live, you already know about that. My Facebook page is tagged in there in my bio. And Twitter, of course, you can go there uh, and actually see everything that I post on a daily basis. All the catalog of videos are all on YouTube, so that will be attached there as well. You can contact me, join the mail list on my website www.budgetboss.ca slash contact and add yourself to the email list and you can also book a meeting with me as well which a lot of people are doing right now obviously we're doing them virtual which is good so uh virtual meetings are the way to go for at least the time being so you can book a meeting with me doing that as well uh let's do one last check on the markets before we take off still fairly optimistic for the day we're looking at about one to two percent increases in the markets right now which are uh, decent gains. Uh, we're going to probably see a leveling like this a little bit up, a little bit down on a daily basis over the next little while till the picture becomes a bit more clear about what's going on with the COVID-19 campaign. So again, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to say one more thing. Again, happy birthday to my pops, 61 years old today. I'm about to give him a shout. Uh, I don't know if he'll watch this video. He's not big on the social medias and all that stuff. But uh, good for him. Happy birthday. He's up quarantined in this place uh, up in the country. Deal to him. Uh, he's actually loving it. Doesn't really make a difference to him. His life's that way anyway. Uh, it's pretty much quarantine life all the time. So shout out to my dad, uh, my money hero, great guy, and uh, doing his thing in retirement right now, which I'm very proud he's doing. And I want everyone to have a great day. Check out the links. Check out the bios. Uh, all the links for the Canadian Emergency Fund are going to be there. And all the links of all the previous videos and all the posts that I shared today will be there as well. So have yourself a great day, guys. Peace.